Okay, so what we're going to do here, I just started a car a couple minutes ago. We're doing a bleed down test. I've got this uh, fuel pressure meter hooked up to the fuel rail through the uh, cold start. This goes to the cold start valve. It's not cold here, so that cold start valve isn't doing anything anyway. But the idea is I want to see what kind of fuel pressure is the fuel pump and regulator providing to the fuel rail. So currently I've unplugged the starter solenoid. So when I turn the key to start, that's when the pump runs on this particular mile. It doesn't run unless either the, you have the key in the start position or the run position and and there's air flowing through here. That's a safety thing so the pump doesn't just run if the car is in a wreck or something like that. But anyway, since the motor's not going to be running, the only thing that will turn the pump on is when I turn the key to start. So we're going to do that right now. And then we're going to see how much pressure we get and see how rapidly it bleeds down. Here we go. You can see that 40 right there. Ready? Boom. Off. I turned it on. That's when it started. It went up to about 38. And now it's bleeding down. And we're just going to time this and see how long this goes. My, con my concern is that this bleed off is too fast. Um, I frankly have no idea what too fast is. So I was looking for some help from anybody who knows a lot more about fuel injected cars than I do. But the point is that if the pressure bleeds down, it came up pretty quick, I'll, I'll give it credit for that, but I only ran it a few minutes ago too. I, might, I think what might be happening is all the fuel is bleeding down out of the system and then when I go to start it after it's been sitting for an extended period of time, it all has to get reprimed again and the long term starting, which to me is like several seconds of crank, 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 crank before it starts up is due to uh, the fact that it has to reprime and get this fuel pressure back up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a static test of what exactly happens with the bleed down. Uh, I'll just yak while, I'm, while we're doing this. But the idea is uh, the, the, the thing I'm going to do next, I'm going to go for a few more seconds and stop. I mean, we kind of get the idea of how fast it's moving. Again, I'm, more, I'm really looking for experienced people who know something about this. Is this too fast? Is this normal? I think what's, I, I think it's supposed to keep its pressure and it's supposed to stay pressurized. And the only thing that would make that happen would be a check valve in the uh, fuel pump so that it can't flow back out. I mean, I don't think it should be flowing back out through the return line because the fuel pressure regulator, which is that device right in there, shouldn't be sending any fuel to the return through a return line since it's pressure so low. I mean it's it only it only push through excess pressure. And since there's clearly not excess pressure, should nothing be getting returned. Anyway, you get the idea the idea here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing, only I'm gonna go clamp off the uh, inlet line after I pressurize it. So let me get my tools I need to do that. Where is my... Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get this all set up and I'm going to do this. Well, anyway, I'll do this right now. I don't really need to restart the car. There, I just, I just cut off that line, the fuel inlet line. So let's assume that's like a check valve that's now functioning. Now watch this. Remember, it was moving. And it's not going to move a bit, I can tell you that right now. Because I've already been through this routine. So, again, this makes me think there's something wrong with the uh, check valve and the fuel pump. If it's supposed to maintain pressure. Now, I'm going to reach over there. I'm going to reach over there and undo that. Let's see what happens here. So, in other words, right... I take the clamp off and we're back to reducing pressure. I think you'll see it'll, it'll continue to drop down. So anyway, that's the that's the rub. Uh, I'm, I'm again I'm, I'm a little bit puzzled what's going on here. 
but when I came out here after letting this set for an hour I was all the way down to zero so I'm thinking this could be the problem why it's such a hard to start thing if I if I clamp that off immediately after the pulling the pressure up it won't drop off. In fact we'll just go ahead and do that. Let me, me repressurize. I'll go there as quick as I can and do that pump. Ready, set, go. Up. Now quickly he moves quickly. Yes I said quickly. Get this thing on here. Stop it. Quickly back. And let's see if there's any movement at all. I know this is probably about as exciting as watching grass grow, but that's the way it is. Oh. And actually, I think it is still moving down a little bit. Huh. Let's keep an eye on it and see. So, if it's not leaking down, obviously it's not leaking down. I got that good and tight. Let me just squeeze it really tight. If it's not leaking down. Why was it new shadow? Sorry about that. Oh, I got it on our good and tight. Let's see. If it's not leaking down from the uh, from the fuel line back through the fuel pump then I guess the other suspects could be well the cold start valve which I know that's not leaking because I've already tested that this cold start I'm going to go over here I, that cold start valve I actually put pressurized fuel to it and well, that's just valve right here I put pressure to it and put a little you know voltage source to test to make sure it was spraying and it would start and stop under pressure so I put a pressurized line to it and it held the pressure. Then you, you know, you turn on this, turn on the switch, and it would come on. So it could be leaking from the, uh, could be leaking down through the rejectors, I guess. And the way I'd have to test that is I'd have to clamp. Well, I can. I mean, if it's leaking down through these injectors, then that's that. You know, it's leaking. What are you gonna do? But anyway, and it's still going down. Yeah. So I guess my original theory that it was through the fuel pump may be flawed maybe it just goes down to a point and there's not enough pressure to continue to leak but I've got that thing clamped off pretty dang tight and it is still going <clears throat> okay, I'm going to do one more thing uh, I'm going to clamp the return line next that's the only other thing I can do so let's pop this but this is what makes me feel so weird watch this Boom. I mean, obviously something's happening there. So the the pressure in the fuel, the pressure in the uh, the line after the clamp back to the tank, obviously had dropped because as soon as I released that clamp, it dropped back down quickly again. So the pressure from the clamp to the tank definitely dropped. I think we can say that's for sure. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna turn this on for a second. Dare I clamp off the return line, just turn on for a second, see how much pressure I get? That would be an interesting test, but I don't want to blow any fuel lines off. Let me see. I'm just going to do that for a second. So this time what we're going to do is clamp off the return line. I don't know what this is going to prove, other than maybe I can break something. Okay, the return line's clamped. I'm just going to turn on for a second and see what that pressure jumps up to because now the regulator is no longer doing anything. This will be basically seeing how strong that fuel pump is and how good all my lines are. That's interesting. Oops, I heard something that didn't sound good. Hmm, I don't like that. I thought I heard fuel squirting somewhere. I see fuel anywhere. Oh yeah, <laughs> way to go, Dave. Got fuel. It probably came. Oh yeah. Oh, that's not good at all. I blew a pipe. I blew a hose. Ah, eh. damn it. How is that even possible? 
Hmm. Well, that's not very good. Here, let me turn the light here. What's going on? I am surprised that that happened. Whoa, yeah. So now I need to get some new fuel lines. So apparently, shoot. The line right here popped. Uh, let's see if you can see it. Right in there. That's nice and wet. Damn it. Do, do not clamp off the fuel return line. Least ye risk popping something. This is obviously where it's leaking from. I can feel it. So, that's, that was my bad. That'll teach me to be a smart guy. More later. <laughs>